10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Call the three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and lift off. Proton Fire Radio. Hi, and welcome everyone to another edition of your Journey to Success podcast, sponsored this week by Lupe's Cleaning. I'm your host, Kenny Weiss. I'm a life coach, speaker, and author here based in Phoenix. The goal here each week is really to create a movement of people who are passionate about learning and growing and wanting real answers, not the superficial buzzwords that's so prevalent in this industry. They want to go deeper. They want actual plans and processes to deal with certain things they're struggling with in their life. And today I'm really excited. The whole format of the show has changed. It's now a live call-in show. I mean, guests were great. Um, I may do that from time to time, but, you know, everyone out there is struggling, especially, you know, we saw last week a couple more people, you know, committed suicide. And these are just, these are the celebrities. This is happening all day, every day. And we're all in some way looking for help. I think it's a big reason there's been such a rise in reality TV is we get to see other people's struggles and know that we're not alone. Yet there's still such a bias against talking about all this stuff or getting help or reaching out. And and that's really why I do what I do. I was in that place myself. I had no answers, was hurting. And luckily for me, I just had a passion to find out why am I such a train wreck? So I just kept studying and learning. Now I want to pass that information on. So to call in, it's really simple. Just go to Skype. Look for me, Kenny Weiss. You'll see my picture come up so you know it's me. And just call me. Uh, I don't care what the topic is. Anything you want to discuss in your life, whether it's a relationship, maybe a divorce, that you're still fighting about things and you want to know how to stop fighting. Uh, Is it communication issues? Is it something in your career? Do you struggle with fear or self-sabotage? Has there been some sort of trauma or abuse in your life and you can't get past it? Is there addiction? Doesn't matter what the topic is. Uh, Nothing is off limits. Um, It's all the kind of stuff I help people with and have learned myself what causes those things and how to turn them around. Now, for some people, you may not want to, you know, have people know who you are. So if that's your situation, just create a bogus profile on Skype. I don't care what the name says. You're not going to come up on the screen on Facebook Live or anything like that. Um, It's just the audio portion. So don't be afraid to reach out. And again, whatever the topic is. So the other thing I want to do is while I'm say I'm talking to someone, if you're listening and you have a question or you want to call yourself with a different topic and you're watching live on Facebook, just make a comment so I can see it. That way I know there's somebody else waiting to call who needs some help as well. I'd like to get through as many people as possible with whatever they're struggling with, um, and help as many as I can. So while we're waiting for people to call, I just kind of had a topic in my hip pocket here. Um, and, and really something I, I, you know, like almost every client I ever talk to, or I hear people struggle with constantly is the inability to say no, whether that's business or their personal life. You know, this sense that if I say no to somebody, I'll somehow be rude or selfish or they feel tremendous guilt over saying no. So they say yes to everything. Maybe they're in business and they're saying yes to all these things. They're overwhelmed or all the different family requests. You know, their husband or wife wants them to do everything for them and they say yes to all of it. And then eventually they get incredibly resentful over doing it. You know, recently a friend of mine, I was talking to him and and he talked about his wife and how she was at his office and he wasn't there. And he asked her to pick up some clothing from the office, you know, that he'd left some suit jackets. And the next morning she said, sure, of course, I'm happy to. Well, the next morning he wakes up. um, He's like, did you grab those suit jackets? And she said, yeah, they're in the car. Well, he goes downstairs and opens up the car door 
and they're just crumpled in the back seat underneath briefcases, all this stuff. Well, it obviously just flips out like I can't wear these, you know. Are you aware that you put them away like this? And she freaks out. She starts screaming at him. I can't believe how selfish and arrogant you are to expect me to pick up your stuff for you. Well, this is what happens a lot in arguments is his where he went to was, but don't you see the suit jackets? I can't wear them. They're all wrinkled. And she's going, yeah, but don't you see you made a request of me? Now, when somebody flips out like that, what I was helping him see was what she wanted to say was no. See, she's saying yes to things that don't work for her. And then eventually she's throwing them back in your face. We've all had this experience in a relationship where at some point we turn to our partner. This is what usually causes most divorces is we go, you know, I've been doing A, B, C, D, E for you for years and you still won't do Y for me. Well, unfortunately, that's the codependent dynamic that we've all been raised with. And I'll get into that in a minute. But what that means is this person never wanted to do A, B, C, and D. They did it to manipulate out why from the other person. So one of the first keys to learn whether you should say yes or no to somebody about any request is, do you think you'll ever throw it back in their face? If you think there's a possibility you will, then you should say no. Then you're just saying yes because you want them to like you or, you know, it's a codependent dynamic where you feel they may think you're selfish or something like that. But there's something going on where your inability to say no forces you to do something. It's called giving yourself away and you go against your own morals and values or your own needs and wants to try and get this person Um, to like you or to deal with. There's such tremendous fear around saying no that you give yourself away. And so you inadvertently say yes and throw it back in their face. So the first thing I want to do is talk about kind of where that comes from, why we all have that. Well, unfortunately, as I talk about a lot, none of us are taught how to be a parent. None None of our parents take a class or learn a lesson on it. None of us are bad people. But uh, I liken it to, you know, getting our hair cut. I find it fascinating that our hair, something that no matter how badly we butcher it, it'll grow back perfectly on its own. We won't let anyone near it. Even the government won't let anyone near it unless they have a license. But to be a parent or have a relationship, we don't know anything about it. And the second you mention it, people get defensive and go, well, I've been watching, you know. Um, but it would be like me saying, well, look, I've been sitting in a salon watching my parents cut hair for years. Isn't that enough? No, we want you to have more experience. So our parents weren't bad, but what happens is because we aren't taught these skills, what parents inadvertently do because they're struggling with their own self-esteem or their own, um, um, lack of self-worth or overwhelming emotions, because maybe they were a young parent they inadvertently try and get the children to meet those emotional needs. And so a child grows up, let's face it, when we're a kid, our life depends on our parents. We can't say no. If they want us to be an athlete, take music classes, um, whatever it may be. And, you know, as parents, they're constantly controlling us and telling us what to do. Now, many of those things are in our best interest, but a lot of them, are so the parent doesn't feel overwhelmed. And, you know, think of it. <clears throat> How many times have we all heard our parents say something like, God, would you guys stop? You're driving me crazy. Well, what that means is because the parent isn't doesn't have the ability to control their own emotional well-being, now they need you to act differently to be able to control themselves. So that's an inadvertent way where they're controlling you and making you do or be something so that they feel better inside themselves. Again, it's it's not that they're attempting to hurt us. They're just unaware. And so that process of constantly being in control of us and controlling our emotions so they feel safe, 
that's where that fear and indecision and the tremendous guilt comes from saying no to somebody. Because literally, whether you realize it or not, the fear is that you can't say no because you're basically saying no to your parents. Now, you don't, you don't realize it consciously, but that's what's going on is you don't realize that you have inadvertently put your parents' face on top of your spouse, your business partner, whoever it is. And so the reason you can't say no is you see your parents. And if I say no to them, my life is in jeopardy. My life depends on the safety that they provide because let's face it, they pay for everything I do. They buy the house we live in, the food I eat, the clothes I wear. I need all of that to survive. And so the fear that comes up is, If I say no to them, then I'm alone in this world and I have to fend for myself. Well, nobody wants that experience. So that's the first thing to recognize. It's almost like a reparenting. And when that, the tremendous energy of that fear comes up of saying no, you have to realize, wait a minute, this isn't my mom. This isn't my dad. This is my spouse. They're making a request. I get the option of saying yes or no. And the thing to remember is it's not always concrete, like something like that. Say this man's wife, uh, the next day, if he asked her to pick up the suit jackets, she'd be like, sure, no big deal. Because our moods and where we are in that day, they're always changing. So there are certain things where one day it's a no, the next day it's a yes. Now, we may have certain hard line no's, like for me, I can't have drugs in my life. I know it's okay to smoke pot, but you're not present. Um, You aren't, you have dissociated from your life by smoking pot. I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who can't be present. So that's a hard line. No, it never changes. Everything else I can like about the person, but I will not give myself away because I've done that in my past relationships. I've gone, well, I like all this. What's the big deal? I can put up with it. But then eventually I throw it back in their face and go, well, you aren't present. All you ever do is smoke pot, right? Well, that's my fault. They, they basically showed me from the beginning, this is who they are. I chose to ignore it. They're not the problem. I am. I went against my morals and values, my needs and wants, and, and gave myself away. And then I resented them for being who they already are. That's not their issue. So I was, that's why saying yes is so unloving and our whole culture, I'm going to get into the next reason that no is so difficult is every TV movie, every movie, every love song, every book, everything we've all been taught is we have to say yes to everything, that that's the most loving thing. You know, there's this big push on um, helping other people and that's great. And that we shouldn't do anything for ourselves. We should do everything for everybody else. That's the only way you can be happy. Well, that's false. Um, It's not true. Because think of it. What does everybody say after they've done charity work or anything? Listen to them on TV. You'll hear these people who do these grand, wonderful things for people. And the interviewer will ask them, well, why do you do all this? And what do they say? I do it because of the way it makes me feel. See, they're doing it for themselves. Every choice we ever make, we do for ourselves. And that's the way it should be. That's authentic. Now, it's like I'll say this, Mother Teresa, she never did anything for anyone, ever. Never once. What Mother Teresa did was Mother Teresa had an an addiction, an emotional addiction to feeling good inside of herself when she went out and did things for other people. It was never about them. It was about her own need to like herself. And so she did it day after day, minute after minute, hour after hour, and repeated it. Now, the byproduct is millions of people benefited, but she never did it for them originally. She did it for herself. And that's what we all do. Whatever type of thing you ever do for somebody, you have to do it authentically for yourself first. And that's true love. That's self-esteem. But we've been taught this false model of, no, you just have to do it anyway. Well, we can't do it because... 